YouTube, what's up? What's happening? Here I am talking to you with my hand. Um, <laughs> and I am just bringing you guys a video. Um, when I was live streaming the other day, you guys took a really big interest on uh, how to airbrush um, some fire. So I'm bringing you guys a quick video on how to airbrush some fire. And uh, of course, you're going to need your airbrush um, and you're going to need um, transparent red, transparent orange, transparent yellow, and opaque white. And having a little bit of opaque black doesn't hurt, but um, you, it's not really necessary. But you are going to need um, red, orange, and yellow, and transparent, and opaque white. Um, this, these are for Createx colors. It also works with automotive paint. Um, if you have reducer and you reduce your paint um, about 6 to 1 with automotive paint, <clears throat> and you have um, you know, a red, a yellow, and an orange, and you reduce them a little bit, it'll work just as well. Um, or you could skip a couple steps. I'll explain in between. Um, and you are going to need a French curve set or, you know, some kind of cutout with um, different sized, I would recommend different sizes of um, curves, um, you know, going around. Um, the nicer the curves, the better. Uh, so keep that in mind. That's pretty much the only special tool you need for this. And uh, maybe get yourself a reference picture of some fire or something. But we're going to load up some red and we'll get started. So here I've loaded up some red and what we're going to do um, is lay out the base layer for the flame. Um, I know we're using transparent red. Transparent red doesn't show up very well on black, but it does show up. And like I said, this is just the very, very base layer. It's the most important layer. And this is the only layer where you probably won't need this. Um, so you just set that aside and uh, what we're going to do is just give you know, give your flame a shape. And uh, it is very important to give it a good shape because you, these are your boundaries. It's kind of like, um, you know, setting your own, you know, spaces for fill in by numbers, you know. So you want to give it a good shape. This is where a reference picture or something would really come in handy. Um, but really get creative, use your imagination. And, and flames are kind of wild, so you could kind of do your own thing. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and get started and we'll go from there. So as you can see, all I'm kind of doing is adding some shape, you know, fire is pretty random. So you can kind of be, um, you know, use your imagination and just kind of give it some shape. You don't have to follow any kind of pattern or anything like that. It, it's all on you, how you want your fire to look. So just try to make it look nice. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Fire obviously moves in a certain direction, you know, wherever the heat is going, that's the fire, the way the, way the fire is going to move. So try to keep it all going in one way. But other than that, it won't be too bad. What is it? All right, so once you think you have a good base down in your flame, you're going to want to switch over to some opaque white. And uh, we're going to um, really give this some shape using the opaque white. And, you know, we'll start off going with the white. So you're going to want to take your um, curve here. And on this very first layer of red, you really don't want to use it too, too much. But you do want to give your, your flame some definition on some parts, especially coming off of the bottom right because um, flames get more distorted as they get towards the end but the bottoms always have nice um, definition and nice curves going into whatever is burning so I'm just going to go ahead and give it some life and I'll go over a few steps.
So as you can see, I'm giving the flame some shape. I'm using the edges here um, to kind of give one hard edge. But again, I'm using this only for this edge. I'm not following it all the way around um, the curve or anything like that. Just one little soft edge and kind of following the lines off, off of the edge. So not following around, following off the edge. So going like this, um, diagonally off. You don't really want to follow this all the way around. You know, the, the roundness of the flame will come after we add the other colors because we'll, that's when we'll add in the other edge here. But for now, you just want to kind of go in off of one edge diagonally, same thing off the other ones. Make sure to use your different edges going around and just give the flame some fire, some, some life. Um, you don't want to remember that not everything is an edge, right? So there has to be soft softness in here. Um, and that's what these come in. You want to use a little bit of freehand and that edge um, together. You don't want to just rely on the edge for everything. You want to use both. Um, okay, so you want to just keep going and build it up all the way around. Um, again, do it to the best of your ability. Um, but you want to mix in the hard edge with the softness of just, you know, a regular soft line. <clears throat> So as you can see, I got all my flames laid out and, um, you know, I kind of gave them all a little bit of definition and they're all in white. There's red behind it. You can't really see it too well in the camera, um, but there is red there. Um, but what we're going to do is load the bright red again and we're going to go over all of these um, with the red. So now that there's actually white here, the bright red will actually show um, really good um, over these. Um, so we're going to start by doing that. Make sure this layer is nice and dry before you lay the red on top. Make sure you didn't get no wet spots or anything like that. Um, and let this dry off before you add the red. And so when you're laying the red, you don't want to just cover it completely with red. Kind of shade around, give it some shape, give it some, you know, flavor, um, give it some life, you know, shade around the white. Don't just 
cake on red and just cover it completely because that's that's just really not going to give you a nice soft tone <clears throat> so you really just want to you know lightly blend around you know kind of give it color and you know try not to go too heavy with it but make sure you cover it as you can see the red really pops out now that there's white but you also want to make sure you cover all these other little freehand lines that are in there and get those all covered up and, and uh, really in there um, but again you don't have to heavily cake it work around you know give it a nice soft edge make sure you don't get no overspray in areas where you don't want it um, and just work slowly work soft and uh, you know be careful So once you have the red all done, the next step, um, we're going to repeat the whole process basically, starting again from white, um, but once you're done with the white, we're going to cover it with some orange uh, this time around. Uh, when you're working with the, the white, you want to make sure you don't go over the same lines again. Um, it's good to accent the lines that you already have, but don't uh, actually go over the exact same spots, right? So if you're going to go over, say, this curve right here, um, you know, you put your French curve down. But since this curve is already highlighted here, maybe we'll highlight up here this time, you know, so you, so you can kind of connect the curve going around. Um, you don't want to work just in that one corner because then you're just going to end up with that one dimensional plane. Um, but if you put it on, on the side of it, it kind of gives it depth. And you want to make sure, you, you know, you kind of accent what you have, but don't just you know copy it and make sure you get some different flows in there some different lines maybe even some longer ones if you did a bunch of short strokes like i did maybe some longer strokes going all the way through um you know vary it up but not too too much again you don't want to go outside of the lines you want to kind of stay within this area where you've already laid out your flames
Alright, so once you got all your white done, again, you're going to want to come back with your orange. The same process, you know, don't don't just splatter orange over it. Kind of go ahead and just, you know, blend it in. Um, and you'll start noticing right away it's going to start taking shape. Um, you know, but just work slow, blend it in, you know, have nice, nice blends in there, nice shading. And uh, it'll really start to come to life. Once you got the orange on there, you can kind of see it's starting to look like fire. It's coming to life. Um, but you're going to want to repeat the whole process again with white and then going to yellow. Um, and again, when you're using your curve, you make sure you want to accent the lines. You don't want to just go over the same spots. Maybe add a few different ones that you didn't have there before. Um, you know, so just kind of vary it up. Use your imagination. You know, again, flames all are different and they're always different they're never ever the same so you know you can kind of go wild a little bit um, but you know, just kind of accent what you have you know try to make a nice pretty flame you know the crazy is good but it's always better if you make it look nice so again just repeat the whole process white to yellow and then you know we'll go over a few things
So, as you can see, once we got the yellow on there, you can see it's, you know, really bright. You, the flame it looks like fire. Um, you know, and, you know, it's pretty random. There's no really uniformness to it. And that's pretty much what fire is. Um, what we're going to do now is I've loaded up some red. Again, back to the bright red. And what we're going to do is uh, give definition around some of the edges, right? So, even here at the bottom, we're going to add some red and then around the edges. Um, and we're just going to kind of trail these off uh, just so it looks like the fire's kind of, you know, trailing off into the into the top there like a good campfire or something like that. Um, and again, this is just to bring out the red, tone down some of the yellow and tone down some of the orange, you know, and once you lay red over the yellow, it's going to kind of give it a nice orangey tone. And, and it's just going to give it that nice extra little pop um, before we do the final step. All right, so as you can see, adding a little bit of red, just give it that little extra pop, made those orange really kind of pop in and gave the, the fire really some dimension. Um, but the last final step we're gonna do is add the last final highlights around some of this. So we're gonna use some white and we're just gonna go around some of these edges and just you know give them a little, one little tap in with the white and just, just to give it a nice hard edge of white and uh, give it a nice little um, extra pop. Um, again, you don't want to hit the pop too much on the edges, just kind of a little bit on the inside. So it looks like it's kind of going from white, you know, to, to a flame. Um, and that's just to give it a little bit of pop again. You don't want to go crazy with the white, just, you know, a couple edges here and there. And, uh, you know, you'll have a good, nice flame.
All right, so what you can see is I've just given a few highlights here and there, you know, just to give it a little bit of pop, nothing crazy. Um, and, is, you know, I think it looks pretty good. Um, it's a decent flame, nothing too crazy. Again, the more time you take, um, the nicer flame you're going to come out with. Um, but you can, you, you know, if you want to do multiple layers of red and multiple layers of orange and multiple layers of yellow, um, you can do that. So, you know, this is just a very basic... Um, what I would call six layer flame right because you have a layer of red a layer of white a layer of orange a layer of white a layer of r yellow a layer of, of white over that so I think that's about six layers of flames um, you know to make something like this but you could go more you could add two layers of red you know you could do red and then a layer layer of white and then do more red and then layer layer of um, white and then do orange and then do more white and then do another layer of orange and so on and so forth and that'll give it even more depth and more craziness um, but you know just for a basic job just so you guys can get an understanding uh, this is kinda you know the basic way if I go about adding flames to anything um, you know and I think it looks pretty good it's not the oh my god amazing most amazing flames but you know I think they're pretty real looking pretty cool looking um, and so yeah if you guys like the video make sure you hit the like button if you dislike the video for any reason hit the dislike button um, it helps me out either way if you like videos like these and you want to see more videos like this make sure you hit the subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching